whose name will you want to do tonight? Same thing we do every night, Pinky. Try to take over the world. This audio is brought to you by You Are Creators. Five stories that prove multiple dimensions exist. Narrated by Steve White. Reality is nothing like we've been told. It is never stagnant, forever changing and molding. Werner Heisenberg described this as saying, atoms or elementary particles themselves are not real. They form a world of potentialities or possibilities, rather than one of things or facts. In 1952, Albert Einstein came to the realization that the past, present, and future all exist simultaneously, and that time is merely an illusion. Quantum physics has concluded that we live in a sea of infinite possibilities, and that our consciousness plays a major part on the fabric of reality. One of the startling theories of the scientific world is that we don't simply live in one dimension of reality, but are submersed in multiple parallel realities very similar to our own. Here are five true stories that might prove that time is merely an illusion and that there are multiple parallel dimensions all around us. 1. The man from the country that didn't exist. One of the most perplexing events of the 20th century did not involve flying saucers, conspiracy theories, a criminal act, or even strange creature sightings. It took place on a seemingly normal day in one of the most tedious, mundane places one could imagine, an airport. Yet, to this day, no one knows exactly what happened there or why one average business traveler became the heart of an enigma largely forgotten by our modern world. The year 1954 was hotter than normal in Tokyo, but at Haneda Airport it was business as usual. That is, of course, until one unknown date when a routine European inbound plane dropped off its passengers. As the crowd made its way through customs, a neatly dressed middle-aged Caucasian man stepped up and told officials this was just a normal business trip for him, one of three so far this year to Japan. His primary language was French, yet he spoke Japanese and several other languages. In his wallet was a variety of currencies from various European countries, as if to verify his frequent flyer tendencies. When they asked him for his country of origin, things became strange. He casually stated that he was from Torred, on the border between France and Spain. The officials told him that Torred didn't exist, but he presented them with his passport, issued by the non-existent country of Torred, which also showed visa stamps corroborating his previous business travels to Japan and other countries. Yet when they called the company he said he was having a meeting with, they had never heard of him or his company ever before that moment. The hotel he had reserved a room at had no reservation for such a person, and the bank listed on his checkbook appeared not to exist. The bearded man scoffed. Surely this was some elaborate practical joke for his benefit. Customs officials showed him a world map and pointed to the tiny country of Andorra. Perhaps that was his real country of origin, and somehow he was either mistaken or having his own little joke. The man became irate, saying that Andorra didn't exist, but it was right where Torred should be. His proud country had existed for a thousand years. Still in shock over his misplaced homeland, the mystery man was detained by customs and given a room at a nearby hotel for the night while officials tried to figure out what was going on. The following morning, the mystery deepened. Torred's one and only known resident completely vanished from his hotel room, which had been guarded by immigration officials all night long. And, to make matters worse, all of his personal documents, including his passport and driver's license issued by the mystery country, vanished from the airport's security room. 
Police and airport officials searched in vain for the mysterious man. It was as if the whole encounter had never actually happened. No documentation verifying this story has yet surfaced, but it was mentioned in several books, including The Directory of Possibilities, 1981, page 86, and Strange But True, Mysterious and Bizarre People, 1999, page 64. And given its puzzling ending, I doubt that any official would have written up a report concluding that the man and all his documented evidence simply vanished. Surprisingly, misplaced travelers such as the businessman from Tarred have appeared on many occasions. In 1851, a man was found wandering Frankfurt an der Oder in northeast Germany who claimed he was from a country called Laxaria on the continent of Sacria. Another young man who spoke a completely unrecognizable language was caught stealing a loaf of bread in Paris in 1905. He said he was from Lisbia, which authorities assumed was Lisbon or Lisboa in Portuguese. Yet his language was not Portuguese, nor did he recognize a map of Portugal as his homeland. Is Torred out there somewhere? And what about Laxaria or Lisbia? Did these men fall backward through time? 2. Time Dimensional Change and Reaping of Events Florida, July 2011 This was a strange event, but one I have had multiple times in my life. I don't know if it was a time slip or change, and it was only brief on these occasions. There was nothing different about the day. I was getting out of my vehicle after work, so I would say it had to be after 5 p.m. I have the same type of things that happened in some other stories I have read on here about seeing the same thing, but it was me who was the one repeating. I pulled into my driveway, and I felt dazed. The next thing that occurred, I was back on the road leading to my house, and it repeated. Now, the oddity that is strange to me was the first driveway I pulled into was my home, and so was the second. The difference is that the car and home were different places. I had a completely different life. I feel as though this was something like a quantum leap or a dimension change. The only side effect from this that I can recall was a headache and a slight bloody nose. The memories from this other life or maybe a dream, are vague at best. Now, there were other times throughout my life when these same strange happenings occurred where time seemed to repeat. 3. In July 1973, I lived in a college dorm on Long Island, New York. I decided to take a walk to the local stores three blocks away. It was a residential neighborhood, and there was only one route to the stores. As I entered the first block, I remember thinking, I wish there was another route to the stores, as I was bored with this one. Right after that thought, I noticed strange things. First thing that caught my attention was the absolute silence, completely devoid of any sound. I spoke out loud, saying, Why is it so quiet? And my voice had a very odd, far away, tin-like sound to it. Then I noticed the environment had changed. The large modern homes that lined the streets were now smaller, more regimented houses. I looked around for someone to question, but saw no one. I also noticed that although this was summer, the trees were all bare as in winter, and everything seemed gray and white. This was so weird that I actually thought about knocking on someone's door, so I looked around for a house with a car in the driveway. And that's when I realized that none of these houses had driveways or garages, and I saw no cars. I continued to the stores, and as I exited the last block to the main street, everything reverted back to normal with sounds, traffic, and people. On my return trip back home, the same strange scenario happened again, but with one exception, when I got to the second block. 
I noticed a very green, park-like, manicured hill with a park bench that took up almost the whole block. I knew this park was not there on the first trip. When I exited the last of the three blocks, I crossed the street to go back to my dorm, and again everything reverted back to normal. The whole trip took approximately 90 minutes. I left the dorm at 3 p.m., and when I returned, the time on the same clock was 3.12 p.m. I checked other clocks as well. Somehow, I had gained over an hour of time. I've heard of missing time, but this was gained time. More strangeness. I was so unnerved by what happened that the next day I decided to walk that route again, thinking it would never happen again. Well, it did. Same time warp, but now when I got to the second block, I saw that the park was still there, but the bench on the hill was gone. I continued to the stores, still not hearing a sound or seeing any movement. On my return trip home, I proceeded cautiously. I took a few steps, then, in a blink, I was back in this strange place. Now, when I got to the second block, I saw the entire park was gone, and in its place the row of small, regimented houses that I had seen on the very first trip. I am freaking out at this point. I return to my dorm, and again, I have gained time. The next time I walked that route, everything was back to normal. Four. This event took place on Tuesday, February 24th, 2015. I've since looked up similar events, and this site and its true stories section kept coming up. I've decided to submit my story to see if others can help me make sense of it. On the night in question, I was driving home from work, having finished the late shift. After closing up shop at 8 p.m., I headed for home along the highway. All was normal. After a couple of miles, there's a junction where I turn off onto another highway for the home stretch. This is where things got a little strange. As I was driving along, I started feeling sickly and got a strong metallic taste in my mouth. I also became aware that I was the only person driving on this road, which for the time of night isn't rare. It is a quiet highway but I was extremely aware of how there was just me. Then a feeling came over me, and I can only describe it as pulsating. It felt like the street lights were pulsating, like when you drive past trees with sunlight shining through, that flickering, but slower. I looked up at the street lights, and they weren't flickering or pulsating. But the light coming from those lights into the car was itself pulsating. After another mile or so, my turnoff came up and I noticed there was another car in front. Again, like an intense awareness of it. But the car was mine. It was a red Ford Fiesta and it had the exact same license plate. It gets stranger. As I was driving down this exit ramp, following this car, my car apparently, it suddenly vanished in front of me, literally disappeared. The second it does, however, I looked in my rearview mirror. There was a red Ford Fiesta pulling into the exit lane. As I was focusing in my mirror to try and see the license plate, the headlights were on after all, the car behind me disappeared. Again. It just vanished before my eyes. I couldn't comprehend what happened. I went home a little shaken and a little disturbed. I'm still not sure what happened. I've researched and come across time slips. But I'm still completely and utterly dumbfounded by it all. I'm not quite sure what this experience was or why it happened, but it has unsettled me. I've been uneasy driving this road since, but it's left me questioning all sorts. It has thrown me completely. 5. In 1991, Glenn was a university student in Nova Scotia. 
What began as an ordinary bus trip back to his hometown to visit his parents turned into a confusing distortion of time and space. I sat at the back of the bus, and there was nobody around me, says Glenn. But there was a family sitting behind the driver in the front. The bus ride was uneventful until we came close to my parents' hometown. I was looking out the window and looked at the Michelin Tire Factory as we went by it going uphill. When the bus reached the top of the hill, I got a strange feeling, and for some unknown reason, I started to imagine many people on the bus laughing at me. Right then, there was a blip in reality, and the bus was suddenly about a mile back on the highway. I then had the experience of watching the bus drive by the tire factory again. This kind of scared me, and I noticed that the family sitting in the front, who were talking loudly before, were now dead quiet. I approached the bus driver when we stopped and told him what I thought happened. He looked really nervous, and he said something like, Sometimes things like that just happen. These are five true stories that proves the strangeness of reality and that fact is way stranger than fiction. If you have experienced events similar to these stories, please share your stories in the comments section.